So, the top, the crown, is actually a little more work. We start by going to the transfer station and getting a recycled number 10 can. This is the cans that they sell institutional spaghetti sauce to. So any school, any hospital, any nursing home, any transfer station has lots of these. Now, you don't actually have to get Luigi Giovanni's Italian style number 10 can, although it's, it is better. And what we do with this can, and again, the instructions are on the web, is we first go around with a church key and we make eight openings uniformly around. The way you make eight uniformly is you make one, do the one opposite it. Do this corner, this corner, and put one in between everybody. That gives you eight. The last thing you do is you do that punch thing. So you take the can and you punch in there and you twist. And that's because I've got to cut an opening out of the top here. So I need a place to start with my snips. So that's step two. Step three, probably the hardest step. <clears throat> if we have time, we may come back and show you this, but what I did was I cut half the can off to get it out of the way. Then I cut the opening in the center while I had something to hold on to. Then the last step is to go around and make these teeth. This is the crown part of the cooking crown. So at the end, what I've got is a series of tabs that come down with a church key opening in the center. What that's doing is these fit in the rim of the can to hold it. They let in air, and these let in a little more air. And that combination gives me a nice sweep up into the chimney. So that is the toucan. And the last piece is the chimney. And the chimney we make out of a juice can or any this size can. And I'm going to show you. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take the label off. And the important thing to know about all tin cans is they never put glue right underneath the logo. So that's the place that you can strip and get the label to come off nicely. The glue's always on the back side. And then I will take this unbelievably cool can opener. and pop the lid out. And I've made this absolutely smooth edge. You're not going to cut yourself on that at all. So that's going to set there. That's the completed 1G2 can. The only other thing you need is those three nails. And I bend them because the problem is if they're not bent, they roll. So this just sets them out. I could load it full of wood pellets. Do that part where I wet some of the fuel with alcohol, light it on the top, and away she'd go. This is burning away. It's going to take another 45 minutes. And at the end, and this is really cool, the flame turns blue. And that's how you know it's done. When it turns blue, we'll come back and catch that picture, but we can't wait 45 minutes. You'd fall asleep. We'll come back and see that, and we'll show you how to quench it. Till then. Welcome back. So we're at the end now. That blue flame actually only lasts about a minute and it's come and gone. But it tells you when the end is and then you can unload it and quench it. Now the interesting part is it takes an hour for the wood to turn into char. At the end then the char starts burning to ash. It takes two days for all the ash to burn up. So you don't have to rush. Wait till the yellow flames are out. As we see here, no flames. You'll still feel some heat. Take this off. So I'm going to pick it up, take the nails away so it sets on a flat, non-burnable surface. And remember that paint lid we got when we got our can? This is what you quench it with. 
Now, you just set it there. The goal is not to beat it with a big club. You just set it there and it stops. See, no flames, no nothing. No smoke, a wonderful thing. At the beginning, we saw what we get. This will take hours to cool off, so don't rush it. This is a wonderful thing to do in the evening. Let it go out, throw the lid on, come back in the morning, and you've made a half a gallon of lovely char. Thanks very much.